Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. In this mind-blowing episode, we're going to finish off the badge from the official Apple tutorial on drawing paths and shapes using Pure Swift UI that we started in the last episode, so if you missed that, go back and watch it if you want to be brought up to speed. In this episode, we're going to start by creating the background shape and then complete the construction of this badge, all the while using Pure Swift UI to simplify the code tremendously. So stick around to the end because you don't want to miss that. Oh, do me a favor and hit the like button right now since I know you're going to love this one. So let's get to work. Looking at the original code, we can see that the complexity of the design means it's actually split across two files. You might be thinking, Oh, it's just a hexagon. What's complicated about that? Well, firstly, it's not a true hexagon. And secondly, all of the corners are rounded, which isn't something that's simple to achieve in native Swift UI. So on the left, you can see that they've factored out each point of the shape into its own struct. And each of these segments has a line point, a curve point, and a control point. These are required since, as you can see on the right, they're constructing the shape using a combination of lines and quad curves which is a sensible approach for a design such as this. Ultimately though, even with these things factored out nicely, I find this to be completely impenetrable. Not in the sense that I can't understand what the code is doing per se, but in the sense of what shape the code is producing and how it's doing that. As with the mountain shape, I don't intimately know what these constants are. For example, what's the adjustment constant adjusting? Perhaps a comment would have helped, but the need to add a lengthy comment explaining something is a red flag that the code isn't easy to follow. Don't get me wrong, it's probably as clear as it can be given the limitations of the native framework, so I'm certainly not implying I could have done better or would indeed have expected the authors to. We can do a lot better, however, using Pure Swift UI. And spoiler alert, the resulting code is going to be even simpler than for the mountain shape. Oh, and before I forget, a nice feature of Pure Swift UI is that you can ask the framework to show you the control points when drawing curves or quad curves. So just for fun, I swapped this original line for this. Put a stroke on the shape and got the following result, which clearly shows how they're using the control points in the original design. It's amazing how much clearer a design is once you can actually visualize the control points. Anyway, here we are where we left off in part one. And the first thing we're going to do is comment out the mountain shape, which we're going to need a little later, and add a reference to our background shape. Now we can bring in the image that represents the badge we're creating instead of this mountain image. For this one, we're going to use a polar layout guide. The first coordinate in the polar layout guide is the ring number or radius, and the second coordinate is the segment or angle, which by default is measured clockwise from the top. This type of layout guide lends itself to shapes with rotational symmetry, of course, even though in this case, we're not dealing with an actual hexagon. See how the two vertical sides are shorter than the other four, and that overall it's taller than it is wide? We're going to tackle this asymmetry by being careful with the configuration of our guide. So let's put that configuration in now. Let background shape layout config, which is a layout guide config of type polar, we're going to give it the specific rings of 0 0.9 and 1 and 72 segments. And now we can use this config instead of the mountain config. Usually we'd be using six segments to make hexagons, but we're using 72 because we need to take care of the strange vertices on this shape. Ignoring the curvature, you can see that if you extrapolate the lines, they intersect perfectly with these specific coordinates we've set up on our layout guide. This is going to make our job of constructing this shape chance play. Now I'm going to rearrange things a bit in the harness so we can have a reference image of the badge we're making without it blocking our design. And now we can cut this, move it to the top of the file, make it private. Now we'll need to resume. Just like before, we're going to lay out the config in the rectangle. So let's P this time for a polar layout guide, which is equal to the background shape layout config laid out in the rectangle. And again, we're going to use the shape extension on path to draw this thing. Path, shape, and we're going to pass in an array of points. The first coordinate is right at the top, so I could actually say p.top here, but because I want to expose you to using different indexes for different rings, I'm going to use its actual coordinate here, which is 1, 0. So that's p1, 0. The next coordinate is going to be on the inner ring, 
And this is where we're going to take advantage of the fact that we've got 72 segments instead of six. So if I were going to draw a perfect hexagon, I would be going to the outer ring and to the 12th segment around. Well, first of all, we know we want to be on the inner ring for this one, but because the vertical sides are shorter than the rest of them, we need to go one segment further to give that effect. So we're actually going to go to 13. So this is going to be coordinate P, 0, 13. For the next point, we're going to go just shy of the 24th segment, which is what it would be for a regular hexagon. So we're going to go to 23 this time. P, 0, 23. And again, because we've got three points in there, our shape is starting to come together. The next point is right at the bottom, but I'm going to use the actual coordinate rather than P dot bottom here. I'm going to say P, 1, because it's on the outer ring, comma, 36. And then we've just got to do the same as we did on the right hand side. We're going to go one too many. So that's one past 48 on the inner ring. P, 0, 49. And finally, we'll want to go one shy of 60. So that's P, 0, comma, 59. And although it's hard to believe that we've replicated two pages of code in a handful of lines, we're done. Well, almost. The sharp-eyed among you will notice that we don't have rounded corners in our design, and admittedly, that would certainly make our design look more authentic. All we need to do to achieve that is to tell the shape extension function to round those corners. So we say corner radius, and I'll use a scaled width here to make it size agnostic, rect dot width scaled 0.15. Much better. And now we are done with this shape. Just so you know, if we wanted a different corner radius for each point, we do have the option of passing an array of tuples instead of points, consisting of points and CG floats, which describe the individual corner radii. Right, now that we have all the elements we need, we can go ahead and finish off this badge. Let's get rid of the layout guide now, which we can do in two ways. You can either delete the layout guide, as I'm going to do, or you can set show layout guides to false. And now we head up to our mountain badge view. At this point, or perhaps earlier if you saw it, you might be wondering what a geometry reader stack is. This is a view that addresses the default behavior of geometry readers in that they behave like a greedy Z stack with an alignment of top leading. The geometry reader stack instead behaves as you would intuitively expect and by default centers things inside without the need to make the composed views greedy. I hope that's clear. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about that or anything else we're doing today. Let's set up a Z stack for our design. And looking at the original, you can see that they're careful to calculate the minimum dimension of the frame. So we're going to do the same thing using a nice extension on geometry proxy called min dimension. And we're going to use that to set the frame for that Z stack. Frame geo dot min dimension. Looking again at the original code, you can see that they're using a linear gradient to fill the background. The colors start at the top and finish at 0.6 of the height. We're going to achieve the same thing using gradient stops because defining gradient stops in line is very concise in pure Swift UI. Then we can set the direction separately, giving us more flexibility on how we want to use the gradient rather than baking in the direction to the unit points of the start and end points. They also defined the colors as 8-bit values divided by 255. We can use a nice extension on color to use 8-bit colors directly without introducing complexity. So let's fill that background shape with the linear gradient. Fill, linear gradient, and we're going to be passing it a couple of gradient stops, which are tuples, the first value of which is a color, the second value of which is a CG float representing the position. So RGB8, and we're going to pass the values 239, 120, and 221, and its position is going to be zero. The next stop is going to be RGB8 with the values 239, 172, and 120. And that is going to be a position 0 0.6. Then we need to send our gradient to the bottom. The concise nature of using things like gradients in Pure Swift UI is really one of the things I like the most. To finish off this badge, we're going to need eight of our mountain shapes manipulated in such a way to produce the design of the final badge. That's obviously going to require a for each, so let's put that in now. 
four each from zero to eight. Index in, sort these braces out, and then we uncomment our mountain shape. We obviously need to scale this down, so let's scale it to a value of 0.34 of the original. They're also using eight big colors to define the mountain, so we can do the same thing with a nice fill color of RGB 8, 79, 79, and 191. Next, we're going to offset it based on the minimum dimension that we used before. Y offset minus geo min dimension multiplied by 0.218. And because they're all overlaying each other, I need to rotate each one by 45 degrees multiplied by the index that we're on. Rotate 45 degrees multiplied by the index. And the very last thing we need to do is to set the opacity of each of these things to 0.5. And there we have it. And just look at this code. Isn't it wonderful? As promised, we've got clear and concise code that's a joy to both read and write, even if I do say so myself. Let's take a look at the metrics. I'm not including code in the preview providers for this comparison, and I think you'll agree that these numbers are pretty incredible. Fewer than half the lines of code and about a third of the number of characters to type. That's a lot of time saved, meaning you can spend more of that time working on the design. And when it comes to reading it, I think I know which one I'd prefer to maintain. I would say that it sells itself, but it's completely free, so that would be ridiculous. So give it a try and experience for yourself not only the time you can save, but more importantly, the clarity you can achieve. The README is fairly extensive in the repo, which is listed in the description. As always, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, my excellent friends, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.